Sutra, taught the vows in the four floods, they might sink and drown. With the three realms scorching them, such sufferings are limitless. They take the skandhas as their home. Their egos drown within it because I want to save them. I diligently cultivate the way. Should they be seeking to escape, their minds are inferior and low, and renounce the most superior wisdom of the Buddha. I wish to cause them all to dwell in the great vehicle, to bring forth diligent vigor, and not feel tired or weary. The Bodhisattva dwelling here amasses merit and virtue. He sees limitless Buddhas and makes offerings to them all. In millions of compass cultivation, his guilt is ever bright. Either way, metallic compounds are used to smelt true gold. Commentary tossed about in the four floods, the mice sink and drown. The four floods are the four kinds of upside down thinking that cause one to revolve in birth and death. The four upside down ways of thinking are greed, hatred, stupidity, pride. They also they are also mistaking the impermanent for permanent, mistaking what is not bliss for bliss, mistaking what is not self for self, mistaking what is impure for pure. Those are the four kinds of upside down thought. Actually, there are not just four kinds, but hundreds upon, hun uh, upon thousands of millions of kinds. The essential ones, however, are thinking that what is not permanent is permanent, thinking that what is not happiness is happiness, thinking what is not self is self, and thinking what is not pure is pure. Something is not going to last, but one figures it will last. Something is not happiness, but one takes it for happiness. What is not self, one mistakes for self. What is not pure, one decides is pure. But that kind of upside downness is mistaking a thief for one's son, mistaking suffering for bliss, mistaking the false for the true. So it is said they are tossed about in the four floods the way one might be tossed about in the sea. Their minds sink and drown in those four ways of being upside down. For one's mind to sink and drown is to lack wisdom. With the three realms scorching them, such sufferings are limitless. The three realms have no peace, just like a burning house. They are the desire realm, the form realm, and the formless realm. The living beings in the desire realm depend on desire for their very lives. They only live to have desire, and if they have no desire, then they feel like they are dead. That's why it is called the desire realm. In the desire realm, no one is ever satisfied but always full of desire and longing. Being greedy for wealth, greedy for sex, greedy for fame, and greedy for food and sleep. All they desire forms, sounds, smells, tastes, and objects of touch. They are greedy for fine food, greedy for fine sounds, greedy for fine smells, greedy for fine tastes, greedy for experiences of touch. All that is desire, the desire realm. To get out of it, you have to cut off desire and cast out love. If you have no desire, then you transcend the heavens of the desire realm. But if you can't break through the attachment to form, then you'll be confused by the heavens of the form realm and never go beyond it to the heavens of the formless realm, in which there are no sounds, no forms, no shapes, and no thinking. Those are all within the three realms. However, it says, with the three realms scorching them, such sufferings are limitless. The three realms are, as it were, burning them, and their sufferings and troubles are just too many. All of us now are living in the heavens of the desire realm. They take the skandhas as their home. Their egos dwell within it. They take the dramas of the five skandhas form, feeling, thinking, activities, and consciousness to be their house and home figuring. This house is mine, and I am in the house. But that's all erroneous thinking. Because I want to save them, I diligently cultivate the way. 
because the Bodhisattva on the ground of living filth wants to cross over such upside down living beings. He very diligently cultivates the way. Should they be seeking to escape their minds inferior and low? Some people want to cultivate, but they don't develop minds of great compassion. They don't develop great vehicle attitudes which are free from self. They simply want to become self-ending ahas and cultivate the dramas of sad heroes and those enlightened to conditions. Since they want to only want to take care of themselves, it is said that their minds are inferior and low. They do cultivate and want to escape from the three realms, but the measure of their minds is not great, it's very petty, and they renounce the most superior wisdom of a Buddha. They only cultivate to reach the fruit, fruit position of an Ahat. They don't seek to reach the wisdom of the Buddha. They don't seek out great vehicle dramas. They don't know how to go about seeking the most lofty and supreme and surpass the wisdom of a Buddha. I wish to cause them all to dwell in the great vehicle. The Bodhisattva on the ground of living filth says, Right now, I would like to save those kinds of living beings. So they bring forth the great vehicle resolve for Bodhi and dwell within great vehicle Buddha dramas. To bring forth diligent vigor and not feel tired or weary, he says he wishes to cause them to bring forth a great resolve for body and courageous vigor to diligently cultivate precepts, samadhi, and wisdom without ever becoming tired of it. The Bodhisattva dwelling here amasses merit and virtue. The Bodhisattva who has brought forth the resolve for body who practices the Bodhisattva way and who has brought forth this vast, great attitude when he dwells in that place, assembles all kinds of merit and virtue. He sees the meatless Buddhas and makes offerings to them all. He sees the meatless and boundlessly many hundreds of thousands of millions of Ganges. Sends the worth of Nayutas of Buddhas and he makes offerings to every one of them. In millions of compass cultivation, his guild is ever brighter during the meekest millions of compass of cultivating pure wisdom. His wisdom becomes ever more bright, clear, and understanding in the way metallic compounds are used to smelt true gold. It is the same as when one uses some kind of metal or stone to refine true gold, so that the more it is refined, the more pure and bright it becomes. This means that you have wisdom. If you have wisdom, you should go on to have more wisdom. Don't stop halfway along the road. When you are only halfway there, don't say, Oh, I think I have made it. I have certified to the fruit of Ahasheep, and that's all I want. I don't want to keep on cultivating to Buddhahood. Instead, you should keep on going ahead and cultivate the Buddha way with divisions. Sutra. The Buddha's disciple dwelling here acts as a will turning king, universally teaching living beings to practice the ten goods. All of the good dramas which he cultivates in practice are to seek the tenfold powers and then save the world. He willingly forsakes kingship, wealth, and jewels, abandons household life, and relies on the Buddha's teaching. With a courageous vigor inside a single thought, he obtains a thousand samadhis and sees a thousand Buddhas. All of the various powers of spiritual penetrations, the Bodhisattva on this ground is able to manifest. If he acts through power of vows, it surpasses even these, and with the meatless sovereign ease, he saves the flocks of beings. Of the ones who have and ate each and every wound, the most supreme bodhisattva practices which they cultivate, such merit and virtue as that upon the second ground, for all disciples of the Buddha, I have now proclaimed. Commentary The Buddha's disciple, disciple dwelling here, acts as a will turning king. A bodhisattva who certifies to the second ground regularly makes the vow to appear as a will turning sage king, because such kings have great power 
and great spiritual penetrations, universally teaching living beings to practice the ten goods. They can teach and transform living beings to they hold the five precepts, practice the ten wholesome acts, and cultivate all rewards of blessings. All of the good dharmas which he cultivates in practice, the good dharmas which he, as a will turning sage king, teaches all living beings to cultivate, are to seek the tenfold powers and then save the world, to accomplish the ten kinds of powers of spiritual penetrations that a Bodhisattva, a Buddha has, and then save the living beings of the world, the ten powers of a Buddha, the power of knowing from awakening to what is and what is not the, the case, the power of knowing karmic retributions throughout the three periods of time, the power of knowing all dhyanas, liberations and samadhis, the power of knowing all faculties, whether superior or inferior, the power of knowing the various realms, the power of knowing the various understandings, the power of knowing where all paths lead, the power of knowing through the heavenly eye without obstruction, the power of knowing previous lives without outflows, the power of knowing from having cut off all habits forever. When one certifies to the position of Buddhahood, one obtains ten kinds of powers of knowing through wisdom. The first is the power of knowing through awakening to what is and what is not the case. Awakening to means understanding. In any situation, the Buddha can tell if it is according to principle or not, whether something holds good or not, and whether it is reasonable or not. The second is the power of knowing karmic retributions throughout the three periods of time. The Buddha knows what kinds of causes living in every living being in the three realms throughout the past, the present, and the future has planted, and what retributions each being is receiving as a result, and he knows this simultaneously about all living beings. The third is the power of knowing all dhyanas, eight liberations, and nine successive stages of samadhi, as well as a limitless number of particular samadhis. The Buddha has experienced them all, and by the power of this wisdom, recognizes them all very clearly. The fourth is the power of knowing all faculties, whether superior or inferior. With this power of wisdom, the Buddha knows what the basic disposition of every living being is like. If superior, it is good and wholesome. If inferior, it is low and base. The fifth is the power of knowing the various realms. Realms means states, whether good or bad. The Buddha has already reached the very highest of states, has transcended the three realms, and so he is very clear about all the states and less realms within them. The sixth is the power of knowing the various understandings. Some living beings are intelligent with keen understanding, while others are dense and don't understand. The Buddha recognizes very distinctly the level of understanding of each living being. The seventh is the power of knowing where all paths lead. Where all paths lead means the fruit obtained through each way of cultivation. For example, if you hold the five precepts and practice the ten good acts, you can be reborn in the heavens, and so that is a path. If you cultivate the dramas of the four noble truths, you can certify to the four fruits of ahatship. If you cultivate the travelings of conditioned co-production, you become one enlightened to conditions. If you cultivate the six paramitas and the ten thousand practices, you can become a bodhisattva. The Buddha immediately knows what the the outcome will be of travelling down an any given road, of employing any given method. The eighth is the power of knowing through the heavenly eye. Is one of the five eyes. With his heavenly eye, the Buddha can see absolutely everything, even up to the highest heavens. For nothing obstructs the Buddha's heavenly eye, which is perfect. The ninth is the power of knowing previous lives without outflows. 
the Buddha knows very clearly that what every living being was in its past lives, whether it was an animal or a hungry ghost, or whether it is a returning Bodhisattva. The tenth is a power of knowing from having cut off all habits forever. Habits refer to all the bad habits and faults we ordinary people possess. The Buddha has already seen through them all and put them all down and will never have any of those problems again. When one becomes a Buddha, one cuts off those habits from the limitless compass past so they don't exist anymore. Those are the ten kinds of power of a Buddha. He willingly forsakes kingship, wealth, and jewels. The will turning sage king is able to give away his kingly position to someone else. He can renounce all his wealth and gems. He abandons household life and relies on the Buddha's teaching. He can bestow his countries, cities, wives, and children, his head, eyes, brains, and marrow upon living beings, and rely upon the Buddha Dharma to cultivate with courageous vigor inside and single thought, single thought in the interval of one uh, instant of thought he obtains a, th a thousand samadhis and sees a thousand buddhas he applies through courageous vigor a thousand samadhis sees a thousand buddhas sees a thousand wounds and can make a thousand wounds quake in six ways all of the various powers of spiritual penetrations of all Buddhas, the Bodhisattva on this ground is able to manifest. The Bodhisattva on the ground of living filth is able to manifest them all. If he acts through power of vows, he surpasses even these. What he can do through the power of his vows far exceeds that number and with limitless sovereign ease. He saves the flocks of beings. He has limitless powers of spiritual penetrations and with freedom and comfort teaches and transforms all living beings. Of the ones who have and ate each and every wound so that all living beings of all worlds obtain benefit, the most supreme bodhisattva practices which they cultivate the supreme doors of a bodhisattva conduct that they practice such merit and virtue as that upon the second ground. For all disciples of the Buddha, I have no proclaimed. I have now told all of you disciples of the Buddha about those most supreme Dharma doors and of second ground. Sutra Buddha's disciples who heard the conduct of that ground. The Bodhisattva stays difficult to conceive. All were most respectful and in the heart rejoiced and scattered flowers in empty space by way of offerings. Commentary Buddha's disciples who heard the conduct of that crowd or the Buddhist disciples who came to hear the doors of practice in cultivation upon the second crowd. The crowd of living fields, the Bodhisattva stays difficult to conceive inconceivable, all were most respectful and in heart rejoiced. None of the living beings failed to be most reverent or to become very happy at heart. They scattered flowers in empty space by way of offerings. They shoot wonderful, precious lotus blossoms in the air as offerings to the mantitos in the Dharma assembly. Sutra they praised him, saying, Good indeed, great mountain king, with a kindly mind and pity, you remember, remember living beings, and well speak about the wise one's precepts and comportments, the marks of practice that exist upon the second ground. Those are all Bodhisattva subtle and wonderful conducts, true and actual, with no other, without discrimination. From the wish, to benefit all the flocks of beings, you have thus proclaimed their, most pure, their utmost purity. You to whom both gods and humans all make offerings, we hope that you for us will proclaim the third ground. All the deeds of wisdom interactive with the Dharma, 
but their states are like in detail. Please totally explain. All the dharmas of giving and precepts of the great immortal, high patience and his patience and his vigor, his dhyana and his wisdom, along with his experience, the way of kindness and compassion, the Buddha's purified conduct, we wish you would proclaim. That time, liberation moon again requires saying, Great night of foolishness, O treasury of Vira, won't you tell us of tending towards and entering the third ground, you whose heart is so compliant, who have all merit and virtue? Commentary all of the states of the Bodhisattva were inconceivable, and so every single living being, without exception, was very reverent and delighted, and they all scattered flowers in empty space as offerings to the Bodhisattva. They praised him, saying, Good indeed, great mountain king. The Bodhisattva is like a great mountain king, with kindly mind and pity. You remember living beings. You use a mind of kindness and compassion that bestows happiness, and you are kindly mindful of all living beings, and you well speak about the wise one's precepts and comportments. The Bodhisattva speaks very well about the one with wisdom's three collections of pure precepts, the pure precepts which include all rules and observances, the pure precepts which include all wholesome dharmas, the pure precepts which include all living beings. You speak well of the marks of practice that exist upon the second ground, all about how to cultivate and practice the states that occur on the Bodhisattva way on the second ground. Those are all Bodhisattva's subtle and wonderful conducts. That is to say, all Bodhisattvas should cultivate these subtle and wonderful doors of practice which are true and natural, with no other, without discrimination.